Hello everyone, I'm Pierrette and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to take you inside my head, so I'm going to have to apologize in advance because it's a little bit of a scary place. Um, a lot of my recipes are not actual recipes, they're things that I dream up. Um, so this came from the other day, I was kind of in the mood for meatloaf, but I didn't want to make a traditional meatloaf, I wanted to do something different. So I got the idea to do a turkey meatloaf, but I don't always like the lack of flavor that those have. So I thought, wow, that would be so good if you could take a turkey meatball and stuff it with stuffing. And then I thought, well, that wouldn't be the right proportion of <laughs> stuffing to meat ratios. So then I thought, well, what if I did it as a roulade? So today, that's what I'm gonna try to do, and I'm gonna take you along with me on this journey. We're gonna invent this together. If you're watching this video, it's because it worked. <laughs> and if it didn't, then you'll ne this will never see the light of day. Anyway, so today we're starting with the stuffing portion of it. I have on the stove, boiling already, uh, a cup and a quarter of water and I'm going to toss in a cup of celery because it's also gonna cook in the oven, so it doesn't need to cook a lot before. Uh, a cup of celery, some minced onion, and then in the water, I have just water. I didn't add any salt. It says you could use bouillon, but I didn't want it to be too salty. So just water with a little bit of poultry seasoning and some butter, and then we're gonna add those ingredients now. So follow me. On the stove, uh, the water has already come to a boil. It has the butter, about a half a stick or three quarters of a stick of butter, and some poultry seasoning. And the instructions on this box say to do a half a, or a full bag. I'm only making a half recipe. So we're gonna use half this bag and pour this in. We're gonna add about a quarter of a cup of some minced onion, and we could use fresh but we're trying to make this a little bit of an expedited process. And this is two and a half ribs of celery, chopped very finely. We're just gonna mix this up, let the water absorb, put a lid on it. This looked a little bit dry so I added about a half a cup of water that I heated in the microwave. You don't want it to be soggy, but you do want all of the bread to have the opportunity to absorb liquid. So I'm gonna put the lid on this now and let it do that. I'll come back and check on that in about five minutes. The stuffing that we made I added the one cup of celery, I added about a quarter of a cup of minced onion, and I went ahead and chopped up an apple, a gala apple, and included that as well, and uh, let it sit with the lid on it for about five minutes. Right now it's in the refrigerator cooling off so that it will be cool enough for me to handle. So I'm gonna pull off my ring real quick so I don't like to get it dirty with when I'm working with my hands but we are gonna take some ground turkey. Now, this is two different, two different packages, two different fat contents. This one is 93% lean, 7% fat. I felt like we needed a little bit more fat in this to give it good flavor. And this one is 99% lean and 1% fat. And I'm gonna mix those two together with about three, two to three tablespoons of chopped chives and some thyme, fresh thyme. Uh, this one's interesting because these you just start at the top and pull backwards to get the leaves off of it. And sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. You may end up with having to sort through a little bit, picking the leaves off of the stems because it's very delicate. It works really well with rosemary, but with some of the more delicate foliage of different herbs, the leaf 
structure doesn't allow you to just tear them off of there. Sometimes you have to take a little bit more time and actually pluck. So that's what we're gonna do. You can see I've got several sprigs here. I'm just gonna grab them at the top and pull backwards. And you do get a pretty good bunch. You just have to be a little bit tenacious about getting off the, the leaves at the top of the sprig. This is probably two pretty good sized bunches that I'm putting in here. Um, and then the two to three cups of chives, like we talked, or two to three tablespoons of chives, like we talked about. I'm going to take a potato masher and mix this together. along with an, about two more tablespoons of minced onion, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. I'm going to just mix this up enough that the herbs and the onions are mixed through. Now keep in mind, you can always use fresh onion, but when you use fresh onion, uh, it's gonna cook and it is gonna release a little bit of moisture. Not that that's a bad thing because your turkey can be really dry. So that could actually be a bonus. I also usually do a little drizzle of olive oil when I do any sort of turkey burger, turkey slider, turkey meatloaf, um, it means that you're not getting saturated fat, but you are adding a little bit more moisture to the turkey, which obviously is more naturally lean than ground beef. And in this particular recipe, we use half of it is very, very lean. It's only 1% fat. So this keeps down the saturated fat, but also, introduces a little bit of richness. Now, I'm not gonna add the egg to this because I'm not worried about this holding together. I am worried about the stuffing holding together when we create the roulade. So we're gonna add the egg to the stuffing, not the turkey mixture. And here I have some cranberry. It's just the stuff we all grew up with. It's a jellied cranberry sauce. You can use the kind with the whole fruit in it if you'd like. I chose to use the gel jelly version because I thought it would spread better over the roulade. And I took about half the can and put it in here and just kind of mashed it up and stirred it a little bit. So we're going to be doing a very thin layer of that inside of the roulade. And then we're going to also do a little glaze on the top. I am going to take some Reynolds Wrap foil, any brand of aluminum foil will work. I could use parchment paper um, or wax paper, but in my experience, those get a little bit wet working with gooey stuff and then they don't release well. So I'm gonna try this with a little bit of aluminum foil and a little bit of a generous amount of non-stick spray. And then I'm, I'm looking for the width of my roulade to be about that wide. So it'll fit inside of my pan. So as I lay this out, I'm going to, going to arrange the turkey in such a way Make sure your hands are clean before you start sticking them inside of the raw meat. And then always make sure that you clean your hands afterwards because any sort of poultry or raw meat is never healthy to touch anything else after you've been handling it. So that is very, very important kitchen hygiene. So I'm gonna take this entire amount of ground turkey and I'm just kind of mashing it into a giant, giant patty. And like I said, I wanna make sure that it's approximately the same width 
as my baking dish when I'm done so that it'll fit right in there. I'll move this to the side so you can see. So this is just a little bit thicker than what I wanted, but I am gonna try to square off my ends a little bit and maybe flatten it out a little bit more. Still keeping in mind that ultimately it needs to fit in that width of the baking dish. Okay, so this is looking pretty good right about now. I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna go on to the next step. Clean hands, all ready to go for the next step, which is gonna be the stuffing. So I'm gonna take the stuffing that we made and I'm gonna mix this one egg into it. And this will help to bind the stuffing together so it won't try to slip out the sides of the roulade, which is gonna be trapped in a loaf pan so it can't go too far but it's just gonna help stabilize this stuffing mix. Now, typically on Thanksgiving, I make stuffing from scratch, um, but sometimes when you want just a really quick dinner, the store-bought stuffing mixes are very fast and they are flavorful. I usually doctor them up with a few other ingredients, whether it be celery and onion. In this case, I put some apple. Uh, in the fall, I like to do dried cherries and pine nuts if I do a quick stuffing, which I also do a roulade with a, a pork roast. So we'll get to that recipe someday as well. <laughs> so I tried to make sure that as I was mixing this in on the stove that I got all of the, all of the spices mixed in evenly throughout the stuffing so you don't get one really big bite of poultry seasoning. You don't want that. So the last step is just gonna be to take a little bit of this cranberry and I'm putting a very small amount through here. Cranberry is very, very potent flavor and we don't want to overpower everything else with the cranberry, but it, I thought it would be nice to have a little bite of sweet throughout the roulade. If you don't want that, you can either just put a layer on the top, which is what I plan to do as well, or eliminate it entirely. They also make sugar-free versions, I believe, with low sugar, where they're made with sugar substitutes. And that's always an option as well if you have any issues with A1C, diabetes, any of those things. So now that we have our layers completed, I'm gonna start at one end and just press. And I'm gonna use the foil to help me roll it and press it together as I go. There we go. Now, this is a little <laughs> bit bigger than I planned. It might not be a bad idea to just cook this on a cookie tray, because um, I don't know how well it's gonna fit in the loaf pan, but I think what I'm gonna do instead is cut it in half, kind of squeeze it together and elongate it, and then do it in two loaf pans. So let me wash my hands again. Hold, please. Clean hands, ready to work with some more food. I'm gonna cut this in half. Like I said, I'm going to slide it over and elongate it just a bit. Now you can already see how it's taking shape in that beautiful roulade. So this stuffing should be mixed in really nicely throughout the rest of the loaf. I'm gonna take this, drop it in the loaf pan, give it a little bit of a squish, and then move on to the next one. Same thing, I'm gonna just Press inward with my hands and downward with my thumbs. And I'm just looking to get it approximately the size of that loaf pan. There we go, that went well. And then I'm going to spread a tiny bit 
of this cranberry sauce on top. I don't want to overpower it with sweetness. I don't want to make the cranberry sauce, you know, the featured ingredient. But I do think it's really nice when you do a meatloaf to have just a little bit of a glaze of some kind on top. And that's how I came up with the idea for the cranberries. So this is just about a tablespoon of cranberry across the top. Like I said before, if you don't care for cranberry, you don't have to include it at all. But I personally love the taste of cranberry with stuffing and turkey. I think it's delicious. Okay, we're gonna pop these in the oven at 350 degrees. And honestly, at this point, I have no idea how long it's gonna take to cook them. So when I pull them out, I'll give you the final result of how long it took to cook. Keep in mind, this is an experiment. And if you're watching this video, you're doing this with me. So let's pop them in the oven and we'll see how it goes. But while I was cleaning up, it occurred to me that I should make sure and clarify the rest of this cranberry sauce will be thrown away. Because I used this spoon to rub it on the raw turkey, this is not safe for eating without being thoroughly cooked. This will be thrown away, whatever stuffing is left that had any contact with the raw meat will all be cleaned, washed, or thrown away. So I pulled our roulades out after 30 minutes, and I think that was just the right amount of time. The edges were uh, simmering through the glass. You could see the juices simmering through the glass of the dish, the, the bread loaf dish that I cooked them in, and that worked out really well. Um, that's usually a very, very good gauge for when things are done, when you see that simmering. So that's why I like to cook in the glass dishes. I will say if I had used a metal baking dish, I probably could have broiled the top of it for just a couple of minutes, which would have cooked the cranberry sauce a little bit more and made more of a glaze, which it didn't really do by just baking it. So if you want that kind of glaze, vibe, I think I would maybe try to cook it in a metal pan and broil it. Um, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. It's absolutely gorgeous inside. And I think this is going to make a fabulous meal. You can see the beautiful roulade with the meat and the cranberry and the stuffing. And I went ahead and sliced up one of them and put it on a tray. And I would serve this with some of the pretty carrots. Even a nice salad would make it kind of a light meal, but also really yummy. So I hope that you'll try it. I'm very happy with how it came out considering this whole thing was an experiment. Basically my kitchen is just an episode of Chopped every day. But uh, thanks for coming with me on this journey. I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and please share with your friends. We sure appreciate it. Thanks so much, take care.